Listen, I will be the first to admit that there are certain great RTS games across the board. StarCraft, Warcraft, Age of Empires, Command and Conquer, for sure, especially in those nostalgic senses. But in my mind, Age of Mythology takes the cake. And no, it is not because I have a personal attachment to the game. Maybe a little. Age of Mythology still plays amazingly well, even after all of these years, and here's why you should give it a go in 2023. First reason, right out the gate, is that it is a fast-paced RTS. I understand some players are strategy game enjoyers, like the slower, methodical 4X games like Civ, Northgard, heck, even Dune Spice Wars to some degree. And Age of Mythology having a fast-paced RTS style isn't necessarily unique to them. However, I feel that they do it incredibly well. With this game and how you can develop not only your city as well as your technology and everything in between, you can min-max everything in this game to push out units quickly and even micro those units in and out of harm's way. Now, this isn't to say that the game doesn't have its downtime or its slower periods, especially when you are in the beginning stages of your matches, but overall, there is more than enough to do when the game is not busy versus a fast paced end game where you are trying to control an entire army, take down key enemy units while also dodging god powers, myth units, and heroes. The second reason is the mythological lore. It may be kind of a joke uh, because this is what the game is based off of is old mythology stories and things of that sort. Well, actually, yes, the game has tons and tons of lore surrounding it and it truly provides the background of all of it. In each of the panels for any given unit or building, there's a brief brief explanation of what they are and the story behind them. I spent loads of time when I was a kid learning about ancient civilization, heroes, and mythology just by clicking these buttons. Not only does the mythology have teachable moments, but it provides some seriously unique units that each have their own bonuses in gameplay, as well as having strengths and weaknesses. I love the idea of having a frost giant freeze a unit in place while your army wails away at them. Next, and possibly the funniest, is the god powers. Holy crap, does that add an extra layer of strategy when you're using god powers in this game? I have had literally these powers turn the tide of a fight or a siege or provide an economic boost when utilizing the power right at the beginning. These god powers range from simple civilization bonuses to summoning a literal dragon into combat. Truth of the matter is that these powers can be used in creative and different ways to get an advantage against your enemies and sometimes can even stack together to create some really deadly combinations. Now, to be sure, you can only use most of these once per match. Some have a charge system, but if done right, this could mean the difference between a victory and a defeat. So Age of Mythology really has some of the most satisfying city building in any RTS that I've ever experienced. I don't know about you, but whenever I'm playing a strategy game, I like the idea of building placement, the evolution of your city and maximizing your economy. Placing a few walls and a couple of towers strikes just the right chord when it comes to setting up your base against the incoming masses. What Age of Mythology does right, also in my opinion, is upgrading of buildings as you advance through the ages. Each time you upgrade your town hall, all the buildings in your city upgrade as well. It is such a damn good feeling seeing you go from a simple shanty all the way to a thriving metropolis. Moving on to the different factions that you can play in this game really is just the chef's kiss worth of creativity. You have the Greeks, Egyptian, Norse, Atlantean, and Chinese. Atlantean and Chinese are tied to expansions, but they all have their unique strengths and weaknesses. For example, the Norse have some really strong myth units whereas Atlanteans have very unique creatures that they can field. On top of that, they all roughly function the same way across the board. So if you get skilled at one, you pretty much have a decent working knowledge of the others. Having said that, each of these factions have their own nuances in different play styles. For example, the Egyptians rely heavily on gold, whereas it can be argued that the Norse have incredibly strong myth units that take the cake, or the Greeks have some of the best heroes in game. It would take some time to sit down and play through all of these different factions to truly understand all of their individual differences with depth, but they are all intriguing in on their own right and provide some really unique gameplay. 
Speaking of those different factions, you get to have a taste of most of them through the campaigns, which is arguably some of the best campaigns in any RTS out there. For the most part, you follow Arcantos through his wild journey across different mythological backgrounds to provide not only a great bit tutorial, but some pretty challenging missions. Not only that, they tie in the individual lore with some of the myth units, as well as understanding the characters from old mythology in a very interesting way. Oh, and what happens after you beat the campaign and finish the story? Infinite replayability with the different randomized matches and custom gameplay. This allows you to really fire up the difficulty by allowing you to take on hordes of AI enemies, a 1v1, 1v2, and 1v3, and so on and so forth. If you think you have a mastery of this game, put the computer on the highest difficulty and then try to survive being outnumbered. They do provide quite a challenge, and it is something that you would actually be very interested in. These matches can have random gods, random map layouts, and more, so strategic thinking and planning is paramount, especially when the odds are not in your favor. Do you want more of a human experience? Take on real life players in the online matchmaking where you can fight against your peers in supremacy. I will admit that this has a lot of stress behind it because if you were just learning the game, it may not be as fun because you might get trashed, but playing this game in a multiplayer fashion really does bring out some creative builds and some pretty interesting gameplay. And if you just want to cheese, you could probably just build a lot of towers and call it a day. <laughs> Lastly, coming soon with this great franchise is a remake or a new story or, or we, we really aren't quite sure, but probably a remake of the game. Now, certainly there really hasn't been much to talk about on this topic recently, aside from the announcement trailer that came out a while. And that was it. Zilch. But I believe in the near future, we will have more information on what they're planning on doing with this great game and this storied RTS. And I think that's a great reason to play it now to get a better understanding of when it comes out later. I recently jumped back into Age of Mythology, and this was my experience after playing the game 20 years later. As always, stay caffeinated, folks.